I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and I'm proud to announce we're in Indianapolis, Indiana at PRI, the biggest motorsports event in the country. And my guest today is Steve Strupp, who I'm proud to announce is going to be an author in our soon-to-be release, Mission Matters Motorsports Volume 1 Edition. So pumped about that. And first off, hey, Steve, I just want to say welcome to the show. Well, thank you. We appreciate being here. All right, Steve, so one of my goals here, one of my missions is really to give our audience a unique perspective into not just PRI, but the racing business and the racing world in general. So first off, just going to speak to all, how did you get started in racing in the racing world? Uh, as a young man, got started racing literally with Pintos on dirt tracks. That's, that is where it started. We've been very blessed to, we went from various forms of crew chief and business supporting and working on dirt track cars and doing all that stuff. We've been very blessed as crew chief. I think every every aspect we've been in at some point won a championship. And as time evolved over the years, we did a lot of general mechanic work and various things. And a customer decided to buy a land speed car from Monoville off of eBay. It was a very interesting journey. <laughs> Went and inspected it and was told, get it home, you got 45 days to update, update it, we're going. My question really is, can I have a rule book? And then you tell me where I'm going. <laughs> uh, but I, I like to tell people, I just remember you know, a broad backpack. When we were able to do that, it actually took 60 days to find the second of that. But for me, it was my first trip ever to Bonneville. For the customer, it was his first trip ever. Uh, we bought it, we've been used, but it's been sitting for four years. And our first time ever there, went to learn and get licensed, and was actually able to put it on the two mile off the first time any of us ever sat foot on salt. And as he puts it, he got inoculated with disease right there. <laughs> From there, we built two more cars. Picked up some other clientele, obviously, doing what we were doing. Put that gentleman, Mr. Jack Rogers, to a more 200 clubs in the of history, wow. which included Australia. It was a blast. Very, very blessed to have great customers. And then he decided another eBay story. He calls me in Bonneville and tells me, hey, get you a passport. You're going to pick up this Mustang and somewhere in Oklahoma. They're bringing it to you. He's going to switch trailers and I'll meet you in Laredo and we're going to go with this convoy into Mexico and we're in the seven day road route. And I was like, hey, hey I, yeah, I was like, oh, we've been checking the car out. We've tested it. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whatever. It was a very, very stressful course. The event is called the Lock Road of America. It's a seven day with over 2,000 miles closed road up. It is a big It is challenging. You will run the gamut of every emotion you have. It will run the gamut of every emotion that you have in your life. You will run every emotion that you have from your highest high to your lowest low, from the crew to the driver to the navigator. It ended up being my <laughs> You will cycle through that high to low seven times a day. You don't want to fight, cry, kiss, hug constantly. It's, it's a challenge. But that's kind of how things evolved. We ended up supporting and fueling cars for that for 15 years. Still do. So we built three more Bonneville cars. Uh, Mr. One, Mr. Rogers Camaros is the production car Bonneville. 69 Camaro. I think I've got the record. It's, it's 249, wow. just under 240. There's nothing about a 69 Camaro body that's going to do that. It takes a lot of brute force and a lot of luck. Uh, and then from that land speed background and various people we know, ECTA was formerly the East Coast Highway Association. I'm the owner and president. If uh, the previous owners of the summit, my wife and I would be the perfect candidates to take it over there. Mike got too busy and they were out. And that's sort of how this evolved. And then 
UCTA to uh, Arkansas, the very northeast corner of Arkansas, about 50 miles north of Arkansas. So, but the term Arkansas throws a lot of people because it's a broad, yeah. broad area. I mean, it, you can stand in the racetrack and see the water kind of preserved. Mm -hmm. And this will be our uh, sixth year we bought it in 2018. Mm -hmm. And it, on its third journey, but we have we've grown it to one of the premier land speed events in the country. You can run, well, our last event we had motorcycles, a farm tractor, and an original. <laughs> Cross 78 mile an hour, wow. which he now owns at our event. He set a record three distances. Mosley well, has three, three world records, uh, all the way up to uh, we had one of the Dragon Drive gentlemen, Paul Cross, and Stanford, or his Camaro. And he bumped the track record, and then another gentleman bumped it again. They were both 250 plus miles. So it's, it's the game. Mm. A lot of uh, a lot of a lot of very unique stuff like downhill, the one-off, the innovative, a lot of small motorcycle stuff, all the way up to 250 mile hour, twin turbo, high Lucid, wide open, you name it. The majority of my last five years have been devoted to refining the timing system. And, you know, we're here in track sites deep, and that's been part of our journey. We found somebody that could work with us because of the uniqueness of our industry. You know, there's things that made it challenging for some of our companies, and it helps people understand that they're anything. There are over 6,000 motorcycles and over 6,000 companies. Wow. That means they're different classes. They're going to be broken up by kind of type of vehicle, age, um, size and motor, you know, there's no nitrous, you know, it's all, all motor, small, number of cylinders. I'm like, well, that's cool. I'm like, yeah, they're just trying to make this. Yeah. And he's like, is this ever going to end? You know, and it ended somewhere a little over 6,000. And you get to be on the cutting edge of a lot of technology. Like, two years ago, we had to create, or had to add some. Fuel you have that explosive. There's a gentleman who started a company that's a liquid propane conversion to production vehicles. So we didn't have propane as a fuel. Okay? 6,001. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Here's another one. But it's the innovation leading edge technology is what makes the boat for the landscape racing so cool. And the other segment of our life is the building of these vintage rally cars, these rallies in Mexico and Newfoundland and places like that. And those can vary from a 1950 man, 65 Mustang, to a Mitsubishi. It's just, it's been a fun thing. It has tons of challenges. A group of us that are service guys at the US. Years back, we got to add it up. What years we doing this? And we realized we have driven over 60,000 miles in the first place. Wow. We've been 200 miles from Guatemala. We've been south of Veracruz. We've been south of Africa. We've got to see. I've got to see a whole lot of the world I have to see. We ship hogs. The one client who shipped the semi, the race cars, everything else to her, took all that out to the salt packs, which the directions are, go to this point, turn off the paved road, you see it 110 miles away. Yeah. And when they say off the paved road, we're talking out back desert roads. You're, you're from the West Coast, you know what the yeah. road's out there. That's the more forward just graded out and farm on the sides. 110 miles of that was 79,000 pounds. Oh. That was not set up for it. You know, basically a NASCAR hauler. And you're looking at the dry washers and this. And then I set like eight inches off the barrel. This is not going to be a good idea today, but the grace of God that they did it. It worked. We, we got everybody to keep going. And we got it out and got it in. Wow. So, so Steve, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, executives, business owners, so people of various businesses, whether it's in the race car business or 
otherwise that watch this program. And I just have to ask you, I mean, your stories amazing first off like the types of experiences that you've had the places you've been but as an entrepreneur what keeps you in the game and motivated this i could say motor challenge mm. um, i have my wife's exact quote to one of our customers sitting at a table mm. uh, she was, i want to keep both of them looks at the other shows you won't say you can't afford it. We won't say you can't afford it. <laughs> this is like, I want to shoot both of them. You've got to quit. <laughs> no. <laughs> the experience. It's been a very interesting journey. Going from being a guy off the creek to the guy that's supposed to be, you know, have my shirt stand out front. It's been quite a journey. Um, I look back at blessings I had in my life that I had no idea what I was doing. But I was fortunate in the dirt track world. The gentlemen weren't friends of mine, so I got to watch them. Um, one of them was a little more cool, and built the old horse. And the steward now. Another man was Bob Miller, who built the deal. Dirt track series that rolled out all the time. That is now rolling out all the time. Neither one of these gentlemen asked the black man. Earl's the first man to pay a million dollars per dollar. You know, uh, just an everything. The two big things that always stuck out here after I had to learn to know what we do success is. Everybody will know it knows who Scott Williams is. I remember being in the world with a customer. Scott raised his voice, and his voice was white. So they let him pull off and go through the mud twice, but it worked. It still didn't work. It took that much time for Earl to own it, to make it from the other end of the pit to down. Because there's a whole day of hope. How many times you don't let him try? Not about it. And I will never forget what he wanted. Little smaller statue man who walked up, probably in his late 60s, and cars up on the scale. He leans down like a dirt late model is and looks across and says, What happened? And I said, Scott, what happened? Well, I'm four pounds of light. Let me go through the mud. You know, he told his story. I remember he slapped half his hand on the sheet metal. And you know, this is a superstar. This is a rock star. Thanks for coming, Scott. See you next time. And he turned and Walked away. You know, that, that don't bend. Rules don't change. And the same with Bob Miller. You know, you know, his maximum weight was almost two inches narrower than the other sides of the body that so popular. And the guys were all fine when they come to the old girls. Yeah, we got to pull the bodies in, beat the noses in, you know, give us the other two inches. He's sitting in his old wore out Dodge van. I had 300,000 miles. He you know, the old Pop Top Dodge van. That was his office. And I'll never forget this whole power. You know, those boys, if I told you they could be 110 and light, he'd show up on the But it doesn't matter how light I tell you can be, you are always trying to do it. You'll just push it. There's still just no reason to do it. Valid point. <laughs> you know, I'm a good chief, I build them, whatever you give me, I'm going to try to squeeze it. I'm going to try to squeeze it just a little part. And knowing, you know, not knowing what I was supposed to be learning about right there, but I look back on those things and it's what's helped us. Um, and it's caused a few hard things. You know, people challenge me about the field, I say, why has it got to be that way? Real good stuff. It's just, it's really cool, guys. The bottom line is that we've got to be the same way. There's no committee. I am the president, and I am open. If you can show up with But if there's no reason to do it other than you think it's some advantage, no, we're not. We're between the heads. It's a true amateur motorsport. 
Yeah. 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 It's a crap shoot of who's going to be there and who's not, but we'll comfortable or gotcha. you never know. The modern cars, you know, mm -hmm. it's easy for us. It's not complicated. Mm -hmm. our, our rookie process is simple. It's mm -hmm. not complicated. But yet, I have room for streamliners, belly tankers, oh, yeah. farm tractors. I don't care what level of support, the bikes and the tire warmers. We have everything worked out to where it works for everybody. Mm -hmm. That is a challenge. To still be hospitable to the very one off special built cars. Yeah. You know, it's easy to run the cars that got air conditioning, cruise control. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of these cars are so stock. One gentleman, he was about five miles on the floor, one passing. What happened? I always said, you know, I got my steering wheel controls and I can hear your announcer on the FM. And I can hear my speed. So, and he goes, I, I was trying to turn my volume up because I forgot to turn it up and I missed one of my shifts. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a gentleman running 175 mile an hour. Wow. You know, so it's it's from that casual, comfortable to uh, purpose built 250 mile an hour. Wow. You know, need push trucks to go through that. And that was one of my challenges is making sure that we were hospitable for everybody. And, and as I said, Mr. Rogers got on because he wanted to run every one of the existing, you know, all the two cars. Did not know back when I did that, that afforded me to see the good and the bad and ugly of every one of the existing. Wow. So it was like, all right, we've seen all the good and bad and ugly. Let's make the ugly list. Because that, because I was like, what was good? And I'm not as focused on the good and what was the ugly. Yeah. Because those are the we can't do. Yeah. And we'll, maybe I'm an oxymoron in that. It's like, what can be great? And I know it. I will eliminate what can be bad. Yeah. If I'm giving all the bad, it's naturally good. Yeah. So, what other questions you got? So, the, uh, a lot of people that are watching this, they may not even know that there's racetracks around them. So, I've had this conversation with a lot of people when I was coming out here. They're like, well, there are any racetracks around us. Because, okay, we know the racetracks that maybe you see on TV, right? Um, that's pretty straightforward, but I tell people, do a Google search, see what's around you. What kind of things would you tell to the, let's just say, modern racetrack enthusiast that hasn't really been out? They've seen it on TV a bit, they're thinking about, like, ah, is this for me? Like, what would you say to newbies, newbies to, the, to the industry and to the sport? Like you said, it's just been But the biggest thing is to find out what's geographically the most convenient to you. Mm. Look up who the modifiers and tuners of your car are, the top ones in your area, because they're the ones that are going to play. And they know where to go play. Because it's it's like picking, you know, whether it's carburetors or whatever. I've been very blessed to have a lot of success and great networking. As I tell people, I'm not smart, i got to get rid of them. But, well, let's just say carburetors. I can give you eight guys, and you can argue who's best, but they're all the mm -hmm. And everybody says, who do I go to? I say, who's the one that's closest? <laughs> there's, there's a huge benefit to something in the wrong, and the same as you're going to pick a track. There's no fun in picking a venue that you got to travel. I mean, now I have people driving yeah. 20 hours, but still, to get started, there's no fun in starting 20 hours. Mm -hmm. You want to find something within three to four hours, or two to three. You know, but that's how you get your feet wet without burning up a whole weekend sitting around the screen. Yeah. And the windshield time gets on. Uh, yeah, find your tuner shops or performance shops for your vehicle and ask them, where's everybody going to have fun? Yeah. What are they doing? 
and, and once you get started, I don't care what, then you need to go. There will be guys there that do other stuff. Mm. And from there, it just sort of, the information just balloons from there. Yeah. Find close to place and go have some fun. Mm. Whether that's a drag strip, you know, a little backwards drag strip, or you know, the finest road crossing. And don't be afraid. A lot of people are very nervous. Mm. And I hear it from some extremely, extremely successful people. Mm. I don't know anything about it. I don't want to look a fool yeah. and all that. Oh, I believe me, I get it. I'm the guy that's been three cars from the start and an owner decides, no, I want you to drive, jump in. Okay. Oh, great, thanks. Okay, I guess, jump in. I guess we'll figure it out. I understand, well, I'm a little stupid. But you will not find that kind of really. Everybody will help you. Everybody's been there. And especially in our land speed stuff. Because there's no money, there's no purse. Everybody will help you. Because it's all personal fest. And there's an addiction to it because everybody's like, well, you can put your foot on the floor and go. Like, yes and no, because you will find out managing your shit points. Just, just what you can do in a seat is very five days long. Mm -hmm. And as soon as somebody figures that out, well, now the game is yeah. on. The game is on yeah. because I'm. I did that and I got three. No. And, yeah. and then one of the other, somebody else with the same car says, well, no, I tried this and that got me another two. And, and know, the game's on. Yeah, it's it's on. <laughs> you're mentally hooked. You're, you know, you're just, yeah. you've been vaccinated. And, and, you know, and you're just, you're going to have to prove I can get this better and better. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to figure out something the rest of them didn't mm -hmm. figure out. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of it. Um, the, the no purse makes it a the land speed side, the no purse makes it so different. Mm -hmm. you, just, you get a certain Yeah. But it's, you know, all the distances are surveyed out. I mean, equipment is in national quality. It's used for our stuff, FIA events, you know, Olympic skiing, you name it. Um, you know, were, I'm pretty picky about making sure it's on. Mm -hmm. that, there's no fun doing it if somebody can come back and yeah. dispute what you did. Uh, but, again, like I said, find what's closest to you and go have fun. And just go visit. And even if you don't think you know how to do it, guess what? There'll be guys there who say, bring your car around. Because yeah, it's grassroots racing. This will take a minute if I give an example. Yeah. I was on the way to Texas. Two, three weeks, whatever. To spend thanks, right before Thanksgiving. Tuesday before Thanksgiving, I left to go to Texas to meet up with my wife at a friend's house and help him with some stuff. I'm pulling a 38 foot open trailer behind the vehicle. And I stop at 3.45 in the morning to get gas at a little gas station. And the fuel pump goes out of the trailer. Oh. I can't get off the <laughs> I'm a little off on this. Great. This is yeah, well, yeah, we've been in the worst state. You know, what are we going to do? There's a Motel 6 next to it. Yeah. Call AAA, they come out, we get it off the island, and there is a vacant lot in the So I get it parked there, okay? We're, we're out of the way, let's figure out what we're going to do. I go get me a room, sit and think for a minute, get on Facebook, make a post about, hey, who have I got close? Who do I know? We know somebody. I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Here's the situation. How this evolved, and I knew none of these people. I knew none of them. Mm. But they're racers. They knew of me from ECTA and all that. By 7.45 a.m., one gentleman had picked up my trailer and took it with me so I didn't have to worry wow. about moving it. And I had an appointment at the Watney Chevrolet dealership to be fixed that day. And I don't even think about it. I just wow. did. And 3.45 is when I start the truck. At 3.30, I was looking for my trailer that afternoon. And that's that's what I tell everybody about the racing community. They can tell you've been part of it, you don't get it. But it is, it is very much a brotherhood. And none of these gentlemen have been to my events. You never know. And literally, you know, and I'm sitting there, thank you, Lord. You know, take the blessing. And I've lived in this world for a long time. 
like some people on paper always you know, like, hey, you can bail me out, what can I do? I had options, but let's figure it out. One of my daughters saw it and went to her call. Did you see your dad standing over the rock? And they're like, hey, what's up? They hit me fine. I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. They go, yeah, we looked at 3 30, we're on the road. <laughs> <laughs> the, the racing network, as you can see looking around yeah. the show here, look at the diversity and the countries and everything else that's here. But at the end, it's always racing. Yeah. Uh, one statement I've heard about racing is the eye of the There's a bottle. There's no bottle of air flies. Because once the adrenaline and pressure hits, you can't hide when you walk. So, if you just really aren't a very good person, you should kind of get pushed. Yep. I don't mean that negative to yeah. anybody. But, you know, all walks of life, but everybody's helping somebody else. Right, right. And everybody sees everybody. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's what we do like this is in most yeah. cases. You can't, you can't hide who you are. When you, when you sleep the pride, your ego, money, adrenaline, Stress, all those in the world, you can't hide who you are. The real you comes out. And, and, and yeah, sometimes you find some, you might go off your team, but there's still some good and how you go out and stand there. You might blow up and yell, but that's nothing different than you start tearing things up and being a total fool. And I think that's one of the things that keeps everybody in it. And I guess as a business owner, why it's hard to walk away because I've been behind the scenes on a lot of other things in the book. And I look at these other people and find tell them, oh, I'm so, I'm so great yeah. for who, who my network is. And I, 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 I don't have the patience. Yeah. But it's, it's just a mother. A friend of mine at the 60th birthday party. We actually had the racing things that put all those people on this place. Wow. And I had, had all these whole time things like that. And, and I like his definition. You know, he didn't introduce before I was there. So all these other like that and things. He goes, in your racing family, it's like the fox will go to the world. I said, you may not stay in close touch and you may not know the details of your life. But if you call, they'll take the call. If you need something, they'll say, what do you need? <laughs> and, and that is, it is very true. Like, for example, we broke down. Mm -hmm. Twelve hours later, I'm back on the road. You know, I've got an appointment at the gym deal. And they're not even open yet. <laughs> you know, the gentleman that grabbed my trailer is a service manager at a different brand. But he's friends with the service manager there. So he texts him, sends him my VIN number. And, you know, takes a picture of it. and like I said, he gets a hold of the service guy, yeah, look, have a cup, my brother, and get him in here, get it out of here. Uh, okay. We got it. And so, literally before 8 o'clock, I got this call AAA by head. I got my trailer going, went flat there, grab my truck, get some where we're going. And, but in the twist in terms of life, I just had to lie. It's my normal thing. We rolled up to the dealership and we got there. And as we pull up, the transformer out back blows up and we leave out. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, look, oh, yeah. I'm like, okay, we'll get it fixed, you know, like, we're going to go get some breakfast. You know. <laughs> like, it doesn't surprise me, I mean, it's just, I mean, it won't happen. Yeah. I'm pretty much just used to it. Yeah. And that's where we built some of the customer base, especially in the rallies and other stuff. And it's not a negative comment, but you get a lot of daily quality. We say hot ones. So build a car for something. I mean, they're pretty high. They have no idea what the happens in them. You know, this thing, with Mexican rallies, I mean, it's, it's like Baja and hey, man, you are going to beat yourself for your stuff yeah. today. And they'll work, you know, and they'll do their best and they're up against the wall. And a lot of our clientele. Has come from you know, a, a, a competitor says, we're, we're broke. You know, we're done. We're, we're done. Uh, oh, go to bed. Well, it, it'll be ready in the morning. Well, they don't. Never mind, just go to bed. 
<laughs> it may not be real pretty, but uh, we, we got enough weapons with us. We can fix that. It may not be real pretty, but we can get you back on the road. Look back at them. Nobody's wasting money. It's not, it's not a challenge. And here's my perspective on the deal. You've invested fifteen to thirty thousand dollars to get it. Yeah. Well, I'm you. If we got to spend another thousand yeah. to keep going, at this point, it's kind of a new point. Yeah. I mean, let's just fix it. I mean, we've learned how to get parts into Mexico overnight. <laughs> that is having somebody as you back home on standby. Because it takes two days to get into the customs because you can hear them. Mm. We'll be in the Bay or we'll be in Guanajuato tomorrow night. Driving. Well, no, we're buying these tickets. You go to the airport, you grab these parts, go to the airport, get on a plane, and fly mm. Because you can walk into the customs and we've got parts in there. Mm. Uh, but we can't overnight them and get them at work. People, you did it one place. One year, a friend of mine actually had to fly. His engine builder flew his father down with parts to repair a cylinder here. And they sat there in the parking lot and basically did a manual valve job and put a couple guys in the set of heads and went back on the car and went over. <laughs> you know, it. <laughs> but at this point, you do what you got to do. Yeah. So, how many books have you got? Oh, man. See, we, we, we got a lot. And uh, this has been a lot of fun, I have to tell you. Just getting a an insight into your world, into racing, and also the community. So one of the things we talk about a lot at Mission Matters is community. And that's what we, and you asked me a question earlier, which I'll answer is, how did I get involved in this? By accident, I wasn't planning on, I was a finance guy, I wasn't planning on, um, on starting a book company, on starting like a media company, on, on sitting around, you know, uh, interviewing people. And now over 6,000 interviews in, none of that was planned. It was really um, this community built around what we were doing. The first book that I actually published, I didn't even want to publish. I didn't even know we were going to publish it. I, I put out this first book and others started asking me, hey, how can you help us publish books? And I'm like, I don't know how to publish books. Like, I just want to just for myself, but I do really know how to publish books in that sense. So then just this community evolved around it. And then I said, like you said in, in some of your earlier days, you just started saying yes. And then you say yes, and then you're like, how did I get myself into this? We're doing another thing and another thing. And then I just did a lot of what you're talking about, like the same theme, just another business, but I just figured it out. Um, I would argue that publishing a book is less complicated than putting together uh, some of these vehicles. <laughs> Much less complicated, in my opinion, than that. But really, that's how it started. It was just saying yes, and then this community of individuals came around, and then more people, more people. Now we've published a little over 400 authors and over 6,000 interviews in. And I'm really excited about this Mortar Sports book because, well, number one, um, it's bringing in a new community into what we built, and I, I know a little bit about the motorsports community because I grew up um, in that community. My father owned an auto body shop in Michigan, so in Detroit, that's where I'm from. And so I was always around cars my entire life. Um, so always around cars. And this gives me the opportunity to now have an excuse to come out to events like this and to meet individuals like yourself and now to get, and get these stories out there. Because in my opinion, the story is so powerful just to not only encapsulate and your legacy and what you've done and where, where you've been, but also so that the next generation that also wants to get involved in either racing or motorsports or otherwise, they know like that's a safe place, that's a community. That story that you told about the trailer, that's like, that's legendary. Like to me, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, wow, I can't, I can't think of me being on the side of the road and anybody helping me. I'm kind of like a stranger and, and putting all these things together for me, like that's an amazing thing. And to me, like the community that you built around you, it's not a, and it's not a, I don't think it's an accident. I think that we, we attract people to ourselves and to uh, of like interest, of course, but also same heart, you know, same heart, same vein, same type of individual, same authenticity. That's one of the words that I like to use a lot is authenticity and bringing people together 
together that are that you want to be with, right? Like who would you invite to your home for for lunch or for dinner, or who do you want to break bread with? So to me, that's a very special thing. And I want to just thank you for coming on our show, for of course being involved here. This is not going to be the last time that we talk. Um, any final words on how individuals, if they want to follow up, follow your story, learn more about ECTA? Like, how do people do that? Just you go to ECTA Mile. That will take you to the website. You can find links to me or whatever, or whatever information you've got you want. And, uh, and I got to add to my list here. As crew chief, I've got I don't know the exact number anymore, but over 200, over 20 people I've put in the 200 mile an hour gym. Wow. The look on their face is probably one of the biggest rewards I've ever got. So now my question to you is, when are we doing it? Oh man, oh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is what I'm here for. Well, to be continued, but that being said, we're going to do that. That's happening. So I just want to say, hey, for everybody that tuned in, really appreciate it. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We're going to be here at PRI for the next couple of days. I'm closing out the show. We have some more interviews coming up. Um, hope you enjoyed. Again, hit that subscribe button.